have got a long way into this story without saying much about the very thing that made him famous, I think it's time we started to talk about Buick the Engraver. As an apprentice engraver, he was expected to turn his hand to almost anything. Book illustrations, bar bills, banknotes, advertisements. And it wasn't just wood that he worked on. He engraved on metal of every sort. The blades of steel swords and gold and silver rings, silver plate. He did copper plates for banknotes and bill heads, clock faces, bottle moulds, transfer plates for pottery. You name it, he did it. But there was one thing that his master, Rafe Bealby, didn't like doing, and that was woodcuts. In fact, Thomas claims that Bealby's work in this branch of engraving was wretched and defective. So that sort of work began to be passed to Buick, and he clearly thrived on it. So how did he do it? How good did he get at it? OK, so this is the press room, and these are the chaps. That's Stuart, who's the visitor manager. Good morning. And printer. Hiya. And this is Bob, Hi. who's the engraver and the volunteer. What are you doing, Bob? I'm engraving a piece of boxwood. Boxwood's what he always used, is that right? Oh, yes, that's true, yes. Why was that? Why boxwood? Well, it's, um, it's the most appropriate wood for an engraver to use because it's so dense and heavy. Right. Um, you may be no box. This, you might have some in your garden. And here we've got some logs of uh, box tree. It's a native uh, tree. He would cut a slice off the log, uh, looking like that. There's the bark still on that one, you see. Right. He would cut a slice off, and as, a, as an indication of how old or how long the tree takes to grow to this size, on that particular slice there are 350 annual growth rings. Amazing. And this is the reason why engravers go for this particular type of wood, because it is so dense. When it's been sawn, you get all your um, saw cuts showing, so the next job is to take one of these little tools called a cabinet maker scraper. But it's a very sharp instrument. It would be taken across the surface of the block like that, scraping away until you get a surface like that. That hasn't been varnished. No. Uh, it hasn't been treated in any way other th no. than by scraping. And this has to be a particular thickness. It has to be the thickness of all this uh, print here, which goes into this press behind us. Now, apart from this yeah. scraper, what other sort of tools did he use? What are you using, in fact? Right. Well, he would need to start with uh, a drawing uh, from which he could work, and he would first of all create a transfer drawing like this uh, one that he did of his goldfinch, it's watercolour actually, and then he would rub the back of this with uh, a soft pencil so that he would be able to apply this to the block and he would fix it by folding the edges over. You can see actually the edges here where his dirty thumb pressed the paper over the block beneath and then he would he would then draw with a, a sharp pencil on top of the um, watercolor or the drawing that he prepared and the soft pencil beneath would transfer the uh, drawing onto the wooden block underneath there and it would be on that transfer drawing on the wood that he would then work uh, with his wood engraving tools. 